This video is the continuation of the previous video. In the previous video, we discussed an SAT math score. We said that the score follows normal distribution with mean equals to 600 and standard deviation equals to 80. And then in the previous video, we solve a bunch of probability problems. In this video, I would answer some percentile problem and they involve inverse normal distribution. So let's say I want to find what scores do you need to be the top 10%? Take SAT, right? So you take SAT, you want to get a good score because you are applying for a very good college. So the admission office, they sometimes they want, okay, I am a, we are a very famous uh, academic institution. We only accept students who stands on top 4%, top 3%, or top 5%, but you are looking at your test report. How many scores do I need to be the top 5%? How many scores do I need to be the top 4%? Who do I compare with? Do I compare my score with my friend? Do I compare score with everybody in my high school? Or do I compare my score with everybody who took the same test on the same day? So I am going to answer those questions right here. First of all, let me find the cut to be the top 10%. How many points do you need to be the top 10%? Let's find out. So first of all, top 10%, here is the cut. So top 10%, so we draw a standard normal curve. We have mean right in the middle, and then top, top, top means the, the right-hand side. So we make a cut right here, that is a Z, then this is top 10%. So first of all, I have to find the Z scores for the top 10%, okay? Let's do that. How do you go from a probability to a Z. You use what? You use normal CDF. Is that right? No, that is not right. You use inverse norm. So you have to go to second, go to VARS, and then inverse norm. So this Z, let's, let's write this out first. So the calculator command is inverse norm, and then the area is 10%. The mean is zero, standard deviation is one. We use zero and one because we use Z. Z means standard normal. Okay, so look at my calculator. Second, this is not responding so well. Second was, and then the inverse norm is one step underneath the in normal CDF. So we pick inverse norm, and then we input 10%, comma, 0, comma, 1. If you are using a newer calculator, you see a menu, then on the area, you input 10%. The mu, you input a zero, the standard deviation, you input a one, and then you choose paste. That will paste the command over to the home screen. If you are using an older calculator like mine, you have to type these three numbers and then separate them by a comma. So that equals to negative 1.282. I rounded to three decimal places. And then, is this my SAT score? Of course not. This is not your SAT score. How can your SAT score be one point or negative one point? Now, one more thing. Is this the correct Z? Look at, look at the, the picture. I have a Z on the right-hand side. That's why it is so important to draw a picture. The Z on the right-hand side of zero must be positive, right? And then I got a negative. Why? Because every time you put a probability to the inverse norm command, listen, the calculator assume you want 10% on the left, 10% on the left. They assume you want the left hand side. If you are using the newest TI calculator, there is a tail option. I know most people don't have that. There is a tail option. If you do, take a look. There is a tail option, left, center, or right. Don't modify that option. Keep that on the left. That helps you to understand the characteristic of this curve better. So 10% is on the left. So what the calculator did is they assume that the 10% is right here. So that gives you a negative Z. But I, I am a human. I know I want a right-hand side. So the Z must be positive. So therefore, I will just pick a positive Z. Z is equals to positive 1.282. The reason we have a negative and positive because this standard normal curve is symmetrical. I call this a left Z and then I call this a right Z. So this is the Z that we want. Of course, that is not my answer. SAT score, how can that be a one point, right? And then you undo the standardization. You take X minus the mean. 
divided by standard deviation that, you, that equals to the z and then you solve this linear equation so first you multiply the both sides by the denominator 1.282 times 80 and then the left hand side you have x minus 600 and then your x is equals to 1.282 times 80 and then you add the 600 to it so that equals to the score that you need to be the top 10 percent 1.282 times uh, 80 and then you add 600 to it so that is equals to 702.56 i will just round this to 703 points so if you want to be the top 10 percent then you won't need a 703 points or above Again, if you want to be the top 10%, you need 703 points or above. What we did is I compare your score to everybody who took the same test on the same day. That's how College Board analyze your score. So you receive a test report, right? And then you see your score and then you see the percentile. So let's say I, I am the I. I am in charge of the admission office. I only want top 10%. If your score, if I will read your SAT re score report, if your score is 703 or, or above, okay, you are in. What if your score is 703 is below 703 points? Then unfortunately, you didn't meet my standard. Then I'm not going to give you any admission to my college. So that's how they run this admission stuff. All right, so the first one is top 10%, and then the next one, the, they, they won't say the bottom 20%, so they usually, the language they use is, they will just say a 20th percentile. When you see a problem on a test or on the homework, they will just write a 20th percentile. So percentile, do you still remember the box plot? Do you still remember what Q1 is? The Q1 is 25th percentile, right? That means, listen, the first 25%. Percent. Percentile means the first. So 20th percentile means 20% on the left-hand side. So this is a standard normal curve. You have Z in the middle. 20% is right here. 20% is on the left. So the mean is zero, right in the middle. If they don't use the word top or upper, they use the word percentile only. That means left. Okay, and then how do you find the Z? So the Z is equal to inverse norm, 20%, 0, 1. So this time we take the negative. Second was inverse norm, 20%, 0, 1. And then you have negative 0 0.842. You add 1 to the 1. So that is your uh, standardized score not your raw score your standardized score how do you get the raw score you take the x subtract which is the score that you need subtract the mean divided by 80 you get negative 0 0.842 and then you solve for x right so you take the negative 0 0.842 multiply the denominator you add 600 to it then you get your x so what is that equal to negative 0 0.842 you multiply 80 and then you add 600 to it that equals to 5 532.64 so i will round that up to 533 points that is your raw score what is raw score raw score is the actual number you earn on the test so let's say uh you take a test right you take a math test in class the total is 100 you got 90 then the 90 is your raw score that is what you got on paper. So what does that mean? That means if you have 533 points or below, then you are the bottom 20%. So that doesn't sound nice, right? If you your score is 533 or below, then you are the bottom 20%. All right? So that's how you do another percentile problem. The last one I have is uh, the middle 40%. Uh, Trust me, no one will ask this kind of question, but it is good to know. So the last one is middle 40%. This type of problem, no one is interested. But what if you are taking a test tomorrow and you see this problem on a test? This is a totally fair problem. I know no one is interested in this kind of data, but as an instructor, I am interested in putting this problem on a test to see how much my student understand inverse normal distribution. So this is not about who under who is interested in the data. This is about how much you understand 
on this subject. So middle 40%, why is this an interesting problem? The reason is this time you have two unknowns. And then you cannot just put 40% to your uh, inverse norm command because that is middle 40%, not left, not right. So putting 40% straight to your inverse norm is not going to work. Now, how do we find Z1 and Z2? So in order to find Z1 and Z2, I need to figure out two things. Number one is I still have a, a percentage right here and then right here. So you have 40% in the middle, so you take 100% minus 40%, you have 60% left, right? You divide it by two, then you have 30%, so you have 30% on the right, and then 30% on the left. To find Z1, you input inverse norm, 30%, 0, 1, that gives you Z1. Let's take a look. Second wash, inverse norm, 30%, zero and then one there you go negative 0 0.524 and then z2 symmetrical right 0 0.524 and then you use them to find the raw scores so the first one that you will have to find is uh the negative right x minus 600 divided by 80 that equals to negative 0 0.524 the other one is a positive 600 divided by 80 that equals to positive 0 0.524 and then this is negative 0 0.524 times the denominator you add 600 to it this one is you take the positive times the denominator you add the 600 to it okay negative 0 0.524 times uh, 800 and then you add 600 no, 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 800 sorry 80 times 80 plus 600 then you get 558.08 so if you don't want to type this again just type second enter all right second and then enter do you see that the previous command pops up on your calculator click on the left arrow move the cursor all the way to the left so the cursor is on the negative symbol so do you see that the cursor is flashing on the negative right and then you click the del right next to the mode click the del so the negative is gone and then you hit enter then you get the other one 641.92 so in this way you don't have to type a, the whole thing again so this one we round that 558 642 so if your score is between these two numbers then you are the middle 40 percent i know no one is interested in this kind of data but to understand the characteristic and uh, to understand the concept of inverse normal distribution this is a very good exam problem trust me all right so that will be the end of this video if you think my instruction is helpful let me know in the comment section below. Of course, like the video, subscribe to my channel, share the video to your friends so many more people can get benefit from my video. I appreciate your help. I will see you all in the next session. Signing out for now. Take care.